some things that are just constant. So no matter which demographic group you identify with, belong to, whatever, uh, those activities remain important, social, physical, cognitive, maintaining your heart and brain health, of course. A recent study that I was a part of focused on social activity among older Black adults was thinking about, well, what are the most meaningful ways that people can engage with others? We found that volunteering in communities that they belong to and something where they found purpose was most impactful for their heart health and their brain health. So that's very important among older Black adults. With older Latinos, it's the centrality of the family, making sure that they're able to engage with family members. They're taking part in decision-making everything from what we do in older age in terms of finances to research. However, I would argue that family, social activity with people you like, things that benefit your group, I think those are universal. So what can protect us and decrease or diminish disparities are amplifications of the things that work for everyone. However, I truly think that a reduction in disparities, us researchers really have to engage with policymakers and other groups in terms of structural changes that can occur in terms of our society. So everything from the recently implemented CMS guide model to how can we make parks, green space, other locations for physical activity, libraries accessible more readily, those things are very much important for reducing health disparities. So individual activities are key. Family activities are key. We're all responsible for ourselves, but we do need structural changes in terms of actually really reducing disparities. So I frequently talk about micro, meso, macro framework. That means at the micro or individual level, the meso, the community and family level, and the macro, the structural or systems level. So increasing knowledge and awareness at the individual level, people may feel more empowered so they can take more control over their health and it's not so taboo. So sometimes brain health is this nebulous thing. Like I can't really see it. What do I do? Do I talk about it? But it impacts everything. So I think more knowledge about Alzheimer's disease and also even more broadly brain health and aging can say, well, there are things that I can do, maybe not to fully absolve me of any risk, but to reduce my risk. And these things may feel fun. I may feel more purpose and connected. Then I go on to say, well, what does this look like in my family? How can others join me? But then we need our institutions at the meso level. How can we have more accessible health care? How can we speak about brain health from the provider level, make it more friendly, but then also not simply pharmacologic, but non-pharmacologic lifestyle changes, et cetera, that are made not to overwhelm, but in bite-sized chunks. So what is the lowest or smallest task that we can do for the biggest bang for our buck? That's important. But I will keep saying this, at the macro or structural level, we need those changes. And I think if policymakers knew about uh, green spaces, libraries, uh, the importance of quality health care and access to that quality and timely, I think those things could be hugely impactful for equity and aging going forward.